Hey everybody, how we doing? Happy Friday. This is the Greenlight Weekend Podcast, and as always, I'm your host, Brian Nystrom. How we doing today? Um, I wish I could hear your responses. I'm doing fantastic. Just got done snowboarding up at Purgatory. Had a fantastic day with my boy, Evan Stambler, and uh, yeah, doing the damn thing. I guess let's go ahead and get into our sponsor. Our sponsor is Dead Room Comedy. Dead Room Comedy is a comedy group and production company based in Denver, Colorado. It is comprised of four very funny stand-up comedians, and they are doing big things, ladies and gentlemen. I am jealous of where they're going in um, the comedy space. Um, I want to get more into that, but unfortunately, my life is uh, turning a different direction. I'm going to keep doing comedy, and my life goal is to still be a comedian, but for the next five years, I'm probably doing something else uh, still going to do comedy, still going to write, still going to grind, but um, probably not moving away to do comedy anytime soon, unfortunately. But if you're a listener of the podcast, don't you worry. We ain't going nowhere. I'm going to keep this motherfucker rolling. Um, hopefully have more and more interesting people on every week. I'm trying my best with that. Um, what were we talking about? Dead Room Comedy? Yeah, Dead Room Comedy. Check them out on any social media platform at Dead Room Comedy. And check out their website, deadroomcomedy.com, and their YouTube channel, which is incidentally called Dead Room Comedy. Their YouTube channel is one of the best parts about this company. They put out a new video each and every Monday. They are all brilliant. Sure, they've had some less brilliant than others, but they're all still entertaining, which is impressive. It's impressive the amount of uh, content they're they're able to put out and uh, still keep it entertaining. I've said this before, but it's one of the few things where I'm scrolling through Instagram where I actually stop the podcast I'm listening to or whatever and then turn on the audio for their clip because I want to see what the fuck happens. They're always good, always funny. Follow Dead Room Comedy. Their link tree is in the links below this episode, so check them out. Support them because they support us. That's all I got to say. Uh, I feel like I had more to say. Um, on December 27th, I'm doing a 30 minute set at the Starlight, Starlight Lounge. That's what it's called. Yeah. I'm doing a 30 minute set at the Starlight Lounge. Might go terrible. Um, holidays are historically terrible for, uh, comedy, music, any kind of entertainment just to get people out because everybody's in their own world, which is understandable. Um, this room is currently full of Christmas presents. It is the storage slash podcast room in my home. Unfortunately, I have to share it with storage and other things, but it is what it is, and we make it work. God damn it. We have a guest on this week's podcast. Her name is Emma Z, and she is the host of the Starlight Lounge mic each and every Monday. She is all also the one that booked me for the feature set. I believe I'm actually getting paid for, which is cool. Um, I would do 30 minutes for free just to uh, get the experience, but it's cool that I'm getting a little little Skrilla for my work, you know what I mean? Because putting 30 minutes together in a coherent um, order, whatever, uh, is not easy. Um, if anybody out there thinks they can talk for 30 minutes and they don't have any comedy experience, good fucking luck. And if you've been doing comedy for a while, uh, good luck doing 30. I'm scared. I'm scared. That's what we're getting out of this. I'm scared. Uh, But yeah, on the 27th, I'm doing 30 minutes at the Starlight Lounge. Let's get off of me. Let's talk about motherfucking Emma Z. Emma Z is here. I know I'm swallowing a lot. I don't know why. It's weird. I rolled a joint. I forgot it in the living room. That's not good. But Emma Z is here. Um, If you've never listened to an Emma Z episode, just know that it kind of turns into a bit of a therapy session. It, It goes away from dick jokes and turns into like real life talk real fast, which isn't bad. Uh, I... I enjoyed the episode in the making of it, so I'm not worried about uh, the content necessarily. I just want you to know what you're getting into. This isn't a J Dream Long episode where we just talk about dicks and riff and do the goddamn thing. This is a real life uh, talk. Um, Emma Z is also on the show tomorrow at Dolores River Brewery. I'm on that show. It is called Airing Grievances. Uh, Jill Carlson is producing it, and we're just talking shit about 2021, I guess. I don't know. I'm just going to do comedy. Um, I'm going to talk some shit about the year. Sure, but that's part of the comedy. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, It's James Mirabal's birthday yesterday, two days ago, whatever, and I just took him a bottle of tequila, and yeah, 
I might be a little buzzed. Who cares? Uh, yeah, Emma Z is on this episode. Um, you can find her on TikTok. You can find her on Instagram. Emma Z Comedy is her links to everything. I will put the links in the description below if so it's easy to find all that jazz. I love you guys. Before we get started, let's give a big shout out to Ethan Esparza and the Chava people for the intro outro music. It is a huge pleasure to be associated with them and to have music to use for free. It's a band I was currently in, so maybe that's how I got the in. Whatever, we are rambling way too long. Um, shout out to Dead Room Comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 164 with my friend, Emma Z. Damn it, that's twice. I think it's off. Shit. Dead. It's dead. Fuck. Okay, here we go. And we're here. Hello. We got the host of the Starlight Lounge open mic. Currently the only open mic in town. It is. The woman giving us a platform to do comedy. Oh. I'm You're here. Hi. And we yeah. appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. I mean, if it weren't for comics, I wouldn't have an open mic to host, you know. And goddamn, there's been a lot of people this year that decided, you know what, I'm going to get on stage. And they've been kind of killing it. So Sad people. Sad people, yes. Historically. Yes. And well. Andy. He seems fine. Yeah. He's sad. He just is better at masking it than most of us. Is that so. where the flamboyance comes from, you think? Mm, maybe. Masking sadness? That or just, I don't know, he's just super flamboyant. Hmm. I think he was just like born gay as shit. And For sure. Yeah. Yeah. He likes girls too, apparently. Yeah, he does. Yeah. When he gets drunk, he tries to make out with me once in a while, and that's uh, I'm, every time I'm like, dude, you're drunk. No, I'm just taking advantage. Also, I'm just not into that. Hmm. There was a point where I had a fat crush on Andy. That's actually why I started talking to him. Interesting. Yeah. There seems to be a theme of why you start talking to a lot of people. Uh, yeah. And then you become friends with them. Yeah. And, and then I never want to sleep with them because my, they're my friend, and this is why my dating life is terrible, because I'm like, oh, this person's attractive. I want to get to know them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we just end up being really good friends, and I'm like, I can't date this person now. So. Because they're your friend or because you get so close with them that you're just turned off now? Uh, because they're my friend and I mm -hmm. don't want to like ruin the friendship, you know, because gotcha. historically my relationships don't work out. And usually if I end up dating a friend, things get weird and then you can't be friends anymore. Or if you are friends, it's like, well, there's still that sexual tension. I mean, like that's how it's, mm. it is with my most recent ex cause we're friends, but then friends. Yeah. Once you bang. Yeah. Yeah. It and opens that whole window of opportunity. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we're not ever going to get back together, but you are going to come spend the night at my house once in a blue moon when I'm sad and I might let you have sex with me if I feel like it. Huh. Yeah. Not that you needed to know that. Oh, well, the internet, I guess. But who here cares? We are. Yeah. <laughs> we're here speaking truths. Speaking truths. And I'm sleeping shit. with her ex on occasion. What's up? That <laughs> seems healthy. You got to sleep with somebody. Yeah. That's yeah. at a certain point. And if you have options. At some point, you will go ahead and lean on those options, yeah. whether it be a girl you hooked up with at a bar, a single mom, yeah. you know what I mean? And I mean, it's it's easier to go to the ex who it's like, we still care about each other greatly. We just can't be together because we don't match up in relationship means, you mm -hmm. know, what we want out of relationships are different things. So when we come together, it's like there's still all that chemistry. It's, there's still all that love and that fun and that comfort. But, you know, we can just do it without the whole, like, expectation and, like, force of, you know, we're together and this is a thing. Because, honestly, that took some of the fun out of the sex when we were together, you know. Mm. Felt like a chore. <laughs> Bummer. Well, I mean, I just feel like in relationships, like, women are expected to have a certain amount of sex in order to like maintain the relationship you mm. know and sometimes i'm just in my not... relationship it's the opposite oh really i'm i'm just getting older <laughs> I'm not like as horny every day like i can be tired from cutting firewood at this point in my life and be like i'm not really into the mood yeah but 
you know, there's a certain amount of sex expected from a man in a relationship. Yeah, that's fair. And so there, every once in a while, it could be a little chory, but it's very far and few between. Yeah. For me, I think... And I know, know she's done it for me when she doesn't want to. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that's just how it goes in relationships. At some points, you're just going to have sex that you don't really want to have, but you're doing it for the other person because you love them. And I still come. Uh, it, yeah. It's not that bad. Like, right. I'm well, putting in a little effort, but... I, I guess for me, that's where it's a little bit different because mm. in past relationships, like, there's not a guarantee that I'm going to come, you know? Like, you're like, okay, so I'm going to suck your dick for 20 minutes and then you're going to jackhammer into me for, like, another five and then we're going to call it quits and I'm going to say here kind of disappointed and be like, well, I guess I'm going to go make dinner yeah. now. If somebody sucks my dick for 20 minutes, I got about 30 seconds of sex in me. Like, yeah. I have told girls in the past that they're, like, excited about that. I'm just like, hey, just so you know, like you're cutting into your fucking time. Like, you, <laughs> That's you should fair. think about yourself because I only got so much restraint. And if you're good at sucking dick, I don't know what to tell you. That's this is what happens. Yeah, like, that's fair. I I do know guys who can't come from head. Interestingly enough, huh. like I've I've had conversations with male friends of mine who are like, yeah, no matter how good they are at it, I just for some reason like head doesn't make me come, and I'm like, that's super weird. Like, and then there's a part of me that's like, well, what if, what if I? And obviously, I'm not gonna give my guy friends head, but you know, mm. there's a part of me that's like, well, I wonder. I do maybe, like the competitiveness. Though. Yeah, that's it's a challenge. Bitch like, never had my head. Yeah, what about mine? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, can I do it? I'm not going to suck Jadrian's dick, but, like, could I? <laughs> I think you probably could. So Jadrian can't come from head? Is that what you're I don't think us? it was actually Jadrian that <laughs> said uh, that to me, but, you know, I just had to put a name in there. I was going to say, I don't think they're trying very hard if that's the case. Yeah. Um, I have heard Jadrian have sex now a few times, and it's Tight. it's a thing. I'm, re- I'm honestly, this is so Does weird Does he to make say. noise? He does make noise, but it's most mostly from the girls. And I'm like, good for him. Like the other night, he had a girl over and I was like sitting there and just like, you know what? Good for you. And then I just kind of turned up the volume on my TV because you don't want to hear your roommates fucking. But when you do, knowing that they're doing a good job is, is half the battle. The only time it gets annoying in a roommate situation is if they're in a relationship and it's just like consistent. Oh, my God. It's yeah. just like at some point manners have to come into play like you're aware i'm home like don't be a dick about it yeah but if if your homie's pulling like a girl out of town like first time yeah you give them some freedom oh for sure you just accomplish something so the victor goes to spoils oh yeah absolutely but if it's all the time you can go fuck yourself yeah quiet down wait till i'm at work there's there's a lot of options here yeah well i think the people who do make a lot of sound when their roommates are home are weird as fuck like Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't do that. Like, even when I masturbate, I'm silent because I'm scared, like, somebody's going to, like, hear me. Even if they're, I'm home alone, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, like, let's not do that. Only when I'm, like, home alone with a person and having sex can I, like, be as loud as I want and even still. I'm like, I don't know. What if somebody here? Like, I don't want people to hear. I don't know why I'm so weird about people hearing me have sex. I think but it's politeness. Yeah, it is. It's just, like, I don't want to hear it, so why should I make anybody else? common courtesy i guess yeah and if you are making noise during sex um i'm sure there's girls out there that have exaggerated to give their partner a boost oh for a sure. little ego boost but i feel like that's far more disrespectful if there's roommates than if it's just natural like yeah if that's how you feel open your mouth sure like but don't just yell for no reason like, yeah <laughs> it's fucking annoying yeah, it kind of honestly makes me think of that scene from uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall when um, Jason Siegel and Mila Kunis start boning and then yeah. Kristen Bell climbs on top of, what's his Russell fuck? Brand. Yeah, yeah, Russell Brand. I wanted to say Russell Simmons. She's like banging on the walls. Yeah, and she's <laughs> like, ah! And he's just sitting there like, the fuck is going on? Yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah, I feel like, honestly, when people are that loud when their roommates are home, they're, like, trying to brag that they're getting some, and, like, nobody fucking cares, you know? No, that's what adults do, yeah. Yeah. That's where we all came from. Yeah. It's fair. Your parents had unprotected sex to make you. Yeah, I I know. I have horrible images of that. I'm pretty sure that at some point in my life I walked in on my parents, and I'm just, like, repressing that image, you Mm. know? 
I do for sure know that I've seen my dad's dick before. Like that is imprinted in my brain. And I mean, I know I've seen my dad's dick before as like a kid yeah, in the shower, I was but I don't kid. remember. Like, you know, I don't have a I didn't have a big enough dick to like compare. It's right. Like, oh, well, that's a man dick right there. Yeah. See, I had never seen a man dick ever. So that's mm. like, you know, when it when I was like laying there in my parents' bed and, you know, like reading my Harry Potter book and my dad stands up and it just kind of flopped out of his boxers. I was like, what the fuck? You know, and uh, now once in a blue moon that just pops into my head because that's how Why does that works. bother you, you think? Huh? Why does that bother you? I have a bad relationship with my dad mm. and um, I don't know, I guess just seeing your parents' genitalia in general is like not something anybody necessarily wants in life. I kind of have a picture in my head of like what my mom looks like naked. Yeah. You know, but uh, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she's just, yeah, I don't know. She's just my mom. She's got boobs like I 90s think- bush. Like, yeah, I I have that same mental image of my mom now too, and I'm like, that's not disturbing. So I think it it is something to do with bad like relationship, the bad the relationship blood. with my dad. Yeah, there was there was an, a summer where I went to visit and he got mm. creepy, creepy. Yeah, Dang. and I was like, okay, well, well that now it all makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that was a weird summer. I don't sounds like it. Yeah. Don't remember a lot of it? Oh, no. I remember too much of it. And I'm like, I just don't like talking about it. But like, there was definitely a morning where I like woke up and like found my dad like passed out drunk with like crack rocks on the floor in front of him. Mm. And I was just like, hmm, this is cool. (laughs) Crack rocks, historically, not great for sleeping, Mm, which makes it interesting. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm assuming that he had been kind of on a bender for a few days and whatever, because he always had weird people like in and out that summer. Crack people. Yeah. Yeah, people had never met. Weird. And he yeah. was like, yeah, we're going to go record an album. And I'm like, okay, but I don't hear music in there. Why are you in the studio if you guys aren't recording music? I was like 14 and I, you know, was smart enough to like slowly start to piece it together. And my brother was just like oblivious the whole time. And I was like, I want to go home now, please. This sucks. And uh, that was the last summer I spent with my dad. Bummer. Yeah. Well, growing up's weird. Growing drugs up's weird. Drugs uh, definitely influence your decision-making abilities. Mm-hmm. especially crack meth all of them yeah downers uppers fucking even booze just 100 percent. yeah it's weird being sober now and like noticing some of the like patterns of drinking in my friends you mm-hmm. know that like i used to go through and the funniest part too is like i you know i live with a person who's constantly trying to convince me that she's more sober than she is and i'm like the one person you can't convince is the sober person like i've been there i've done that i've seen it fucking all like and denial is the first sign yeah <laughs> it's like no i only had like one shot and one beer last night oh i only had two shots and a beer last night oh i only had three beers and a shot last night I'm was like, she driving that's why she was justifying herself oh she just because if you're not driving who gives a shit um like if you want to get shit faced i think that it's a th- means of her trying to make herself feel better about the drinking problem she knows she has she's like i think it's a thing of like well if i can convince the sober person that i'm doing all right then i'm probably doing better with my drinking than i think i am it's very short-sighted it's very short-sighted because at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what other people think about you yeah um all that matters is the truth yeah and once you start lying to yourself that's a slippery slope Yeah, well, and I went down that myself, you know, I was going through that, like, I, you know, towards the end there, I was doing the same thing, where I would lie to myself about how many drinks I had, and be like, oh, well, I only had, like, five drinks, and, like, not count the purple fuckers, and the beers, and the, you know, like, lines of cocaine in the roadhouse bathroom, and Mm -hmm. you're like, okay, like, Emma, you feel like shit, because you did all of those things, like, you can tell yourself you only had two beers, but at the end of the day... Twelve's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you remember me in my drinking days. Like, it was not hard for me to put down a pint in, like, an hour and then be like, what? No, I don't get why I feel sick in the mornings every day when I wake up. I mean, I didn't really pay attention to, like, what you're drinking or the amount you were drinking. Or, cause yeah. Honestly, I don't care. And unless you're driving. Yeah. That's when I care. Like, if yeah. you're my friend and you're shit-faced and you're going to get in the car, like, just don't, dude. I'll take yeah. you home. Whatever. Um, but if I know you're walking home or whatever, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, I could tell when you were drunk. Yeah. For sure. Um, and on a regular basis, I would say you were more drunk than I would get in public ever. That's fair. Except maybe like 
the comedy festival, maybe Halloween. Like there was a couple times a year where I was not planning on driving home. Yeah. But I'm always planning on driving home, so I have a couple beers and I fucking bounce. Yep. Like But yeah, you got drunk for sure. Yeah. It's cuz I have no like ability to cut myself off and that's why I just had to cut myself off completely. Um driving is the only thing that can really like stop me from drinking. Like feeling good tomorrow doesn't matter to me. Like you know, once I'm here, yeah. that, that's when fucked up drinking might happen. Yeah. But at least I know I'm not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. Like, that's my main. Yeah. Well, and for me, like, why I quit drinking is because I was getting really self-destructive when I would drink, you know? And, like, so that choice was, was personal. And I, you know, obviously don't, like, judge other people for drinking. You've got a beer right there and it doesn't matter. Like, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, you're not hurting yourself, and you're not being fucking belligerent and stupid. I don't give a shit if you're drinking around me. And I tell my friends this all the time. But, you know, people are still so weird about it. They'll be like, is it okay if I, like, get a beer, you know, for lunch? And I'm like, yes. Like, why would I? Just because yeah, we're getting tacos. Yeah. I'm like, just because we're getting tacos doesn't mean, like, I'm going to be mad at you for wanting to take a shot with it. Yeah, know? I drink in front of Jadrin. I... My whole thing is, yeah, you made a personal choice. I will not get shit faced in front of you and cause you problems. Right. But I'm gonna enjoy Bud Light. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like my big thing too is just like don't get shit faced at my house. Like I have a game night every Tuesday and you know, like last week somebody brought not only a really inebriated person into my house, but a, a stranger who was way too drunk. And I was just like, dude, no. Fuck. The worst kind of person. Yeah. A stranger just, way too drunk. Like a way too drunk stranger who is also trying to like participate in a card game that has rules you mm -hmm. know and you're like trying to ex uh, it was it was it was you're not. there to play fucking games yeah you want to win you yeah. want to have a good time yeah i want to hang out with my friends like you know just fucking de-stress for once one night a week you know mm. like not focus on anything but just like you know we're playing fucking jackbox games we're playing quiplash we're playing dumb shit and this guy's over here just way too drunk to function like falling off his chair and i was just i was pissed <laughs> Oh, that's unacceptable. Yeah. I don't want that in my house either. Yeah. Tony Brune and uh, Whittles? Mm-hmm. That's his fucking name? We got fucked up that night. Really? Yeah, because they were like, we got a couple places to stay. And then they were like, we could just go to Emma's. And I was like, I think there's a lot of people there. And remember that roommate, like, it's probably highest chance of having an issue, maybe. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, we'll go to Bianca's little brother's house. And I was like, that's cool. Um, I know they don't have extra rooms. Like, yeah. Like, please do whatever you want. Honestly, I didn't want to bring them back here because I wanted to do shit the next day. Yeah. But they were just running out of options. And Bianca's little brother was at home for another hour. Yeah. And all this shit. And I was like, all right, motherfuckers, get in. Like, let's go. And brought them here and blew up the air mattress and gave yeah. Tony the bed. But we got fucked up till like 3 a.m oh man my abs hurt from laughing <laughs> like i had such a fun time with those guys yeah hanging out with comedians is like the best that's what my game night is it's just you know jason and jadrian mm. and um jesse and just just it's just a bunch of comedians that come over to my house and play you know games together and it gets amusing yeah i would consider consider coming at some point you should Weekly. i also not good you don't me. have to come weekly. I just have a lot of shit, you know. Well, I always cook dairy free, which is something That's you should. nice. Yeah, my best friend is also got has the same dairy issues that you have, so I only cook dairy free now. Which, uh, if you want some some good dairy free shit, I made like a dairy free pizza. I don't know if you can do goat's milk or goat's cheese. I can. Yeah, I made I a goat's cheese pizza it. over yeah. the summer for her, and it was decadent as fuck. I like oven roasted or i um took my cast iron and i roasted up some red bell peppers and i put some chicken on there and artichoke hearts and goat cheese and fucking something else spinach i think it was it was very good made Sounds the crust lovely. crust from scratch i also had to make the tomato sauce from scratch because i bought like the cheap marinara and came home and saw that there's milk in it and i was like shit so i ended there's up milk just, and everything there's milk and everything it yeah. fucking drives me crazy yeah it's it's weird because it's like i'm not lactose intolerant but my best friend is mm -hmm. you know like she has to carry an epi pen in case she eats milk you know yeah. like it's that bad and so you know it's like now i'm super conscious about like the amount of dairy that's in everything so it's weird being a cook man <laughs> yeah for sure yeah um yeah luckily my girlfriend has taken a giant part of that responsibility like nice. on the regs 
because i mean she makes shit with cheese that i can eat you know what i mean yeah. like vegan butter and shit like that yeah like that i would just avoid altogether because when i cook shit that you know has to be dairy free i just like don't even think about the idea of butter or right. the idea of like goat's cheese or whatever i'm just right. like no i can't do that whatever so i just put it out of my mind but she makes me delicious shit with like the awesome flavors and shit i want yeah but it doesn't fuck me up yeah that meatball sandwich i ate yesterday fucked me up mm. it was good though that sounds really good it was good though i took all the mozzarella that was baked off the bun off because i i was like oh i meant to order no cheese and sammy was like yeah um those are the last of the meatballs <laughs> <laughs> well i'm gonna eat it then and yeah yeah it fucked me up oh but kelly got a delicious dinner because i couldn't eat the other half were you oh at Steamworks? second street deli oh okay i rarely go there but i like crave their sandwiches frequently the loaded goat she can go on goat cheese mm. apples ham that sounds really good it's fucking good i know they're cuban is fucking fire like i know they do it on thursdays i don't know it's like a special that they do every week and i always forget what day of the week it is mm -hmm. until it's too late meatballs are mondays mm -hmm. um cubans are good uh it just depends on where you get them because they're so dairy driven yeah butter um whatever the sw swiss. swiss yeah uh, and that that's what adds moisture to the sandwich as well yeah. so there's a lot of times you get a cuban without those things and it's just a dry piece of shit oh yeah i could see that like ska yeah ska's cuban dairy free is garbage that's fair the the pork's just not moist and like they're really chintzy with the pickles which could add some moisture to the sandwich but they're all chintzy with it so it's like pickles are not like a high cost item either no just from a standpoint of somebody who's been working in restaurants for a long time like no I... they come in <laughs> five gallon buckets yeah um, <laughs> i know unless they're using really high-end fancy I think ass they, pickles they're better pickles they're like sliced long ways oh, okay. but still it's like there's i can barely taste this fucking thing when it should be relatively like um present flavor yeah. in the sandwich yeah it should be one of the main because i love a fucking cuban yeah uh, oh it's they're so good but not if you give me a dry piece of shit cuban yeah. we went to this cuban restaurant in atlanta called poppy's god damn it was good <laughs> fucking so good red beans and rice mm. oh my god it was fucking good dude i've been like missing the south and just like the warm i think the warmth more than anything because mm. i fucking hate this time of year it's too cold i don't like it it is cold but i also i miss the food and I, there's a part of me that's like should i just like go back down to louisiana and like get a kitchen job down there learn there's how to make other Cajun places food. yeah you don't have to go to louisiana well i have a family there kind of do you like them no then <laughs> what's the point i don't <laughs> know putting yourself closer to people you don't like yeah People are like saying, well, Dave suggested Atlanta. He was like, come out to Atlanta. Dave lives an hour from Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, there's still shit going on around him, but it's a 60 motherfucking dollar Uber ride to the city. Yeah. That's insane. You should check out Nashville. Nashville. $12 Uber ride. I mean, Uber doesn't matter for me because I have a car and I don't drink. But so. there's just like an idea of cost all around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can live on the outskirts of Nashville and it's right there to the city. It's not an hour. Like, yeah. Dave's was far. <laughs> yeah. I've also heard the same thing about Vegas, but I'm like, why would I want to go to Vegas? I don't know. I'm like in that place where I'm ready to move on because I love Durango. I do. And I, I love, well, I don't know that I love Durango, but I love the little scene that we have here in Durango. You know, I love the friends that I've made here and I like my job but i'm just you know i'm not necessarily happy and i'm tired of being cold so i'm ready to mm. like go somewhere where i can do comedy more than once a week and you know see if it's something that i want to like pursue as a real career or... i don't suggest albuquerque i saw your post yeah i don't suggest that but it's you know it's it's at a point with everything going on at my house i might have to face moving quickly so you know Sometimes you just got to make do with whatever you can do in a short amount of time, you know, so. If Would you be moving in with somebody there? Uh, probably not. Then there's no difference. Yeah. Other than a, a day of travel. There's no difference between that and moving to Louisiana or the South or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or just somewhere else. You wanted to go to L.A. Yeah. Like. 
There's no difference between going to Albuquerque, getting a place, blah, blah, blah. Then you're trapped there for this long. What if yeah. you hate the comedy scene immediately? Yeah. I hate Albuquerque as a whole. I do, too. My favorite things about Albuquerque are Buck D, Steph Darnell, Zach Abeda. Yeah. Like, Fournier when he's there. Yeah. Like, this is the only thing I give a shit in Albuquerque about. Yeah. I think I, I just miss, like, gritty city vibes, which I can find in L.A., anywhere else. I'm just saying move once. Huh? I'm just saying move once. Don't move to another half step. Yeah. towards your goal because it's gonna cost you're gonna have to save up even more yeah if you have to put down first last deposit all that shit yeah like, you might as well just fucking send it yeah that's fair because albuquerque feels a little safer because you have history there maybe family whatever fuck safety it's gonna yeah. prolong your dream and probably get you in a m another similar situation to the one you're in now that's fair in, in my opinion yeah no that's actually a really good advice um I'd rather just fucking send it, you know, and just Good. do it. Get out of, get out of Dodge, and you know, hand over the mic to somebody. I mean, you know, this is all just theoretical stuff. Because who knows how everything's gonna unfold? Like things are unfolding as we're doing this podcast right mm -hmm. now. You know. So if the roommate's out, you might be here for a while. Huh? If the roommate's out, you might be here for a while. Or at least there's no rush. Yeah. You have time to save and make exactly. the plan you want exactly i mean salt lake city is always an option i hear they have a pretty solid scene there hmm. and it's not as far as a lot of places yeah i don't know i think i if i'm gonna go maybe i would want to just say fuck it to the four corners and go you know sure. change of scenery and just you know i'm kind of i love mountains and salt lake gets cold <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm tired of being cold didn't even think about that that's that's the big thing you know with my blood disorder like it, it got worse this year and i like even over the summer i was like having like attacks of my blood disorder like just sitting there in my room and i'm like it, the fuck i can't be losing circulation it's like 85 degrees outside but here we are hmm. so yeah i'm just like you know it's uh it's time to stop pretending that i like the cold because i don't so I don't have to live in it if I don't want to. And nobody loves the cold. Some I, people do. I Some people do are crazy love. about it. Yeah. I love that I'm probably going snowboarding tomorrow if it oh, snows all night. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's I don't even do that anymore. It's too expensive. So. Yeah. I mean, there's ways to do it, but it's still not cheap. Like, you have to buy a season pass early. Like, but all in all, you're still looking at, with gear, at least $1,500. Yeah. Like. No, then, it's you have to dedicate yourself like you have to be dedicated to snowboarding or whatever if if that's something you want to do and i'm just not that dedicated like it's fun but it's not yeah it's always just it. in the back of my mind and then on those fat pow days when i just happen to be up there i'm like this is the best yeah and i just got to keep that in mind because it does seem like a waste of time a waste of money like it's it's a whole day even if you're going for half the day you're fucked up for the rest of the day like i never go before comedy because i'm exhausted and yeah you know it it is a pain in the ass but there are those days of the year that you're just like i'm so happy i'm here yeah like, it's been one week since you left it no <laughs> well i was gonna say it's been like a decade since i last went skiing 2010 so you're done you're retired i guess so yeah i mean if i like got the chance to go again you know for free and somebody like had the gear and the stuff like i would definitely do it Man, I don't know. You got strict rules about this. <laughs> well, I just don't want to spend the money, you know? For me, mm. it's just if I'm going to spend my money on something, I at this point in my life, I don't really like spending my money on fleeting things as much anymore, you know? Like experiences. I you know, I like to have things for my house that I need, you know, video games, books, like things that are going to be around for a while is kind of what I like to spend my money on or, you know, like yeah putting together a nice night for my friends like i i'm happy to spend 80 bucks on putting together a nice dinner for my friends on a game night you know but i don't know spending my money on just doing something in a day feels silly now i guess it depends on how much money it is yeah. that's why i buy a season pass because a day pass is over 100 bucks and i know i'm not paying that like, yeah but season pass for 800 bucks that means it's paid off in eight days if i go like 20 it's like 40 yeah. bucks a day pretty fun but you got to pay up front yeah see i never have like 800 bucks together at nobody any does. given time you nobody know? does oh, that makes me feel better i i feel like everybody else is like doing better financially than i am at that 800 dollars is still on my credit card oh that nice. i'm paying off at 40 bucks at a time because i'm fucking broke right now <laughs> 
Nice. Well, that makes me feel better. I don't know. It's weird being like almost 30 because I'm like, okay, like I should be in this place of like having this, this and this together. Should be thinking about buying a house. I should be thinking about like, I don't know, like I am so far away from even just having any dating prospects, you know, like, isn't this the age where I'm supposed to be like partnering up and like, yeah, well, I have to find a place that I want to be for a That's set fair. amount of time because I get I get antsy. I don't like yeah. to be in one place for more than a couple of years or I start to feel like I'm trapped. So Yeah, if you could actually afford to buy a house here, which few people can, um, it's just one of the best investments ever. <laughs> yeah. Real estate's just going up every day basically. Yeah. And if you bought a house, lived here for three years and then could just rent it out or sell it for fucking fifty percent more than you paid for it, which is kind of my plan. Yeah. It just all this next step of everything has to work out pretty perfectly, which yeah. I think it could. Yeah. So I might oh be in God, that situation a in there. a year. Oh, yeah, that's yours. It's a sativa dominant hybrid. Very nice. I don't normally smoke sativas. I'm an indica girl, but. Indicas just make me sleepy and lazy. I can smoke sativas. Well, I have a couple of strains I've had throughout the years that I can, uh, I can do comedy on. And yeah. that's my... That's my barometer. Yeah. Like, if I can smoke half a joint and go feel great on stage, like, that's a weed for me. Mm-hmm. But I was working on a farm the other day, um, moving pipe all day, which sucks fat dicks. Yeah. Moving pipe sucks. Um, but the guy I was working with, he gave me a bowl, and it was delicious weed, but it was, like, a pretty heavy indica. Yeah. And 30 minutes later, I was done working. Like, <laughs> I still did it, and I was there, but I was, mentally, I was fucking done yeah from that point on i was just like when is this over yeah you know so those don't work for me but like i could smoke sativa and go wreck shop at steamworks like in the kitchen just fucking do 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 yeah tossing pans and shit having a good time for me i like to smoke indica at work because it helps me not feel so overwhelmed with the amount of shit that has to be done every day Cause at at my like in my kitchen, not my kitchen, but you know where I work, it's like me and one other person on a given day. You know, like somebody comes in and opens the restaurant at six. And you're your own prep crew, right? Mm-hmm. So you know you have to make sure that all of the orders are getting out quickly, well, good food. Because especially since our menu is so simple, it's like everything has to be good right off the bat, or else you know we're gonna get. You live in this town. Yeah. Everything has to be good or yeah. a company that size is not going to last. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like me and one other person. And so throughout the day, I have to make sure that we're getting all of the prep done. We're staying on top of the things that just need to be there at all times. You know, like we've got a shelf of just things that have to be chopped and ready to throw on burritos at all given times. And sure. then the background prep and making sure there's bacon and whatever. And it can be kind of stressful, but um, if I just, I don't know, if I smoke a bowl, I tend to not think of the big picture and be like, oh my God, I still have this, 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 and Just and start this checking shit off one at a time. Yeah, it's and like, I'm just like, okay, I'm here until I'm not. Like, just do the stuff. We're going to, you know, close down the line and then we'll focus on the prep. And after that, then we can work on the dishes and, you know, nice. get, because we also have to do our own dishes too. Bummer. Like, Yeah, I am. I'm out. Yeah, dude, I'm I am <laughs> I am the line cook, I'm the prep cook, and I'm the dishwasher, so it's like... Fuck that noise, you better be owning your own business for all those things. <laughs> I mean, the money's good, like, they, because, you know, the cooks do so much, they split the tips evenly with the cooks, so I'm making 50-50 off the cash tips, you know, from the front of house. Huh. So that's nice, you know, like, I literally walk out with cash in my hand every single day, which, you know... That's cool rare for yeah, a cook it's yeah. rare for a cook yeah that and they give me a shift meal and interesting well if everything doesn't work out maybe maybe i know where i'm going next yeah big problem with steamworks is i don't know they're my friends so i have to give two weeks yeah and this other project could happen within a week you know from i might know within a week of when it starts and that's gonna require all my time yeah and I'm going to be working for a construction company making more money and you know what I mean? Like yeah. it just makes way more sense to me because I've been selling firewood. I've been doing side jobs. Yeah. Selling firewood is a lot of goddamn work. <laughs> yeah, I bet. But I still make more than twice what I was making at Steamworks in a day. You know, go out two, three days a week. 
fucking still paying bills and whatever yeah. but the forests the forest gates just closed on december 1st so i can't i don't have access to that wood anymore so mm. i'm kind of trying to figure out what else i might start shoveling roofs i know a guy that pays his people like 30 bucks an hour to shove roofs that like sounds, in forest lakes and shit that sounds terrible but for sure but 30 bucks an hour yeah, yeah. that's fair just to keep afloat because yeah. there is this thing on the horizon it's gonna start maybe three weeks you know I don't know exactly a date, but I yeah. need to stay alive until then. Yeah, I hate that. That's like, I feel like that's where I'm at, too. It's just that waiting game thing of like things, better things are coming, just not quite the second. And we just have to sit here and wait for them to happen. If you want things. Yeah, but you got to be putting in work in the meantime. Oh, well, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, some of it's just it's just like timeline shit. and with your comedy if you want to go somewhere else and make an impression because you're already an attractive girl with green hair you're different like you're gonna get opportunities based on your presence because you're new yeah like bianca did when she went out and she did good so she got more opportunities whatever which you could totally do yeah but i would also be putting effort into that lane and i'm not saying you're not i'm just saying if you expect to move somewhere and have a leg up like you only get to be the new person so many times. Oh, and yeah, that's what sure. makes you interesting. You know what I mean? Is you're the new person. Nobody knows you. And if you just fucking hit it out of the park at that point when everybody's eyes are on you, yep. then you get opportunities. But if you eat shit when everybody's eyes are on you, then you're back with every other comic in the lineup. Yep. You got to work. Not those people that grew up there don't have that that new person opportunity. Yep. But like you got a chance. You know what I'm saying? No, totally. A rare opportunity. I was nervous as shit when I just sat in Atlanta. Yeah, I bet. Especially because I saw Dave do not great in front of me. I was just like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> How did that set go? Did you end up doing well or did you bomb? I did pretty good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, I, it was the most aggressive I've ever been on stage, I would say. Yeah. Like, just that city feel. And I saw, like, 12 comics. Some that I thought were way better writers than me not do well. Yeah. But it could have been because everybody's already heard their jokes. You know, yeah. so all this was going through my head, but I, I knew I was like, I have one advantage and it's that they've never heard my jokes. So tell yeah. the bangers. Yeah. And just like line them up front yeah. to back. And just That's like, what I like to do when I like do shows out in Dolores, you know, or when I just do shows in general. But I, they remember your jokes, too. Yeah. Because a lot of them are the same people. That's like, fair. Yeah, that, I know. Every time I go out there, I'm like, what am I going to bring new? Like, yeah. I'm kind of in that same boat because it's like, okay, we're doing this airing of Grievances show and, you know, I'm going to be telling some of the jokes that I've been telling for a while, like the ramen joke, because that has to do with my shitty 2021, you know, and I'm like, oh, wait, how can I make this like new and interesting? But lately, honestly, for me, if I just go up there with an idea and nerves, I actually do better than if I walk up with a list. Like last night uh, I walked an up. open mic. Hmm? at an open mic yeah that's a different thing than like the theater show yeah you know what i mean like the open mics a lot of times if you tell polished material nobody gives a shit yeah one they've heard it two it's like you're not keeping their attention like a manic fucking depressive person up there screaming about their week like yeah. i have been and you have been and like everybody that's what gets people's attention at a not full open mic yeah but you gotta like record those sets and like you gotta try to get actual material out of those because when you get the opportunities for a polished set where you need a polished set like yeah you gotta put work into both yeah like your spontaneity your crowd work which i've been putting a lot of effort into yeah um and it's getting better yeah. Like, crowd work was one of those things like for a while I was trying to focus on it. And then I don't know, just with everything going on lately, like comedy has not been at the forefront of my mind. And I've been mad at myself for that. Because that's where like, crowd work <laughs> is good, though, because yeah. it's just off the top spontaneity. Yeah. I was super cool or super glad that, you know, Megan with the Mohawk. Yeah. I was super pumped that the dude she was with was cool because yeah. I brought him up a few times and he could have been a dick about it. Like you weren't there or maybe you were, were you there when some dude from Texas was like trying to fight everybody? No, that was uh that was the one where I had Jay host for me yeah. because I was recovering from mushrooms the night before. So yeah, like, that <laughs> crowd work almost got me killed. 
But I was doing good with everybody else. Well, that's good. But this dude just kept getting closer and closer. Oh, God. But luckily, I had a, I had a few friends in the crowd. And I was just like, I, I'm not going to get beat up for that long. Like, yeah. somebody's going to jump in. But he was huge. Like, there was nothing I could have done. Ugh. Maybe tackle his ass. But right. how long is that going to be good? God, I hate it when people try to, like, fuck with the comics, you know. Like, I had that happen when I, I did a show in Cortez at the beginning of this year. And that guy fucking came up. There. And, mm. yeah, kanye me, grabbed the mic out of my hand. I feel like there was something like that recently, too, at uh-huh. one of the open mics. Didn't somebody try and take the mic from Jadrian? Or... No, I think it was a woman. Only happens to women. Or it might have been Jay. Yeah. But then he went to you, right? And then... I don't, I don't know. Somebody Bailey backed down. Which was fun. Yeah. Like, I, me and Drew got up, and by the time we got up, Bailey was already like, get the fuck out. Like, yeah. It's like, oh shit, Bailey. Like, if he swings on Bailey, I'm in. But yeah. if he just keeps backing up, I'm just going to sit here. Like, Oh, you know what it was? I had a guy try to sign up. He was like, I want I want to go up there. And dude. I was like, yeah. And Drunk was, homeless dude. Yep. Yeah. And I was just like, no. Yeah. You know, like, not. <laughs> It's on my way to mic. the mic, he asked me to buy him and his friends drinks. Oh. And I was like, dude, I'm broke. Yeah. And just kept walking. Yeah. And then and then he tried to take the mic. That's what it was. My memory has been kind of foggy lately. I'll yeah. blame the marijuana. <laughs> no, that hasn't happened to me yet, but I feel, depending on the night, it could be very aggressive. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just aggressive. I don't know. Yeah. No, I feel that. Last night, Callie really saved my mood. I did not fucking want to be there. Yeah. And then Callie walked in and started making me laugh and talking shit. I was like, God, I love you, you crazy bitch. Yeah. I, I wish I had gotten a little dose of that, but I just was not not in a good mood yesterday. And I hope that didn't show through my hosting, you know? Like, I was... Showed in your set. Yeah. But the rest of your hosting, you were fine. Yeah. Because I was definitely, like, crying in the back a couple times in between comedians <laughs> and just, like, you know, just not having a good fucking just time. A little overwhelmed you know? by life. Yeah, just, like, I'm fucking tired of all of it. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. I might, and, like, after I bombed, too, I was just, like, fuck. And I went and I, I totally, like, cried on the back patio. I was, like, and I bombed. Everything's terrible, <laughs> you it's know. It's okay. Andy bombed. Yeah. And whoever was after that fucking bombed. Yeah, but Andy has an excuse for bombing and that he, you know, just started and I know. I love it. I love seeing him bomb. Because he just did good for like the first four times. And he was just like, I'm fucking awesome at this. And oh, yeah, yeah. I well, went up to him pissed, and I was like, you're going to bomb, dude. He pissed me the fuck off last night because as I was walking away from my set, he was like, oh, don't worry. You're funny, too. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I don't know. I just I get annoyed sometimes when people like come in and, you know, they've done a set and act like they they will be humbled. Yeah, you just fair. have to have faith in that. And yeah, just let your comedy do the talking. That's like, people fair. can talk shit to me all they want, but I'm always there, and most of the time I do pretty good. Yeah. Like I bomb just like everybody else, but most of the time I'm pretty consistent and I put in effort and I'm trying to tell new jokes and you know what I mean. And that's just what I have to tell myself when people talk shit. Yeah, it's just maybe they just saw me on a bad night. Yeah, that's cool. But That's nothing fair. makes you look weaker than being like, no, you don't understand. I did great last week. <laughs> like, yeah. No, nope, just fucking walk. Just leave. Like, yeah. Hopefully they see you again and you crush. Yeah. Yeah. It's also important to know when you're bombing. I feel like that's like, because I, I had that moment last night and I was like, I could keep going, but I'm not going to because this is just no longer fun for me. Well, it you depends know? on if you like. Every once in a while, you accidentally dig yourself a hole, and every once in a while, you can climb the fuck out of it. Yeah. Like, and if you think you have something, like, I I say go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go, go, go. But if you know you don't, get the fuck out of the way, man. Like, yeah. You know? It's it's hard sometimes because I'm just like sitting there and I'm watching people just go and go and go and I'm like, yeah, you know, you didn't pull it around and now that was like seven minutes gone and. I don't know. I want to start lighting people at five. <laughs> Do it. If they're if they're really tanking, because you know it's like I Andy last night. Yeah, you should have. Yeah. I mean, well, he lit himself at five. <laughs> that's true, and also, I mean, I I wasn't there for most of Andy's set because, like I said, you were I... crying. <laughs> huh? You were crying. Yeah, I was crying in the back. <laughs> it wasn't good. Oh, huh. that's cool. He yeah. was taking some big swings. He's got weird confidence. I I enjoy watching it. I'm gonna start bringing this. Yeah. <laughs> 
So if some <laughs> never interrupt a good set, but if somebody's eating shit and they tell a joke like right and nobody laughs, then just a <laughs> I oh think my would god. That would be awesome. That would be honestly that would get the energy back in the room. It'd be a fun well, it would get a laugh. Yeah, exactly. And I think it I think it'd be a fun theme for a mic. Yeah. Like maybe not every week or wherever. But if like, you want to bring it next week, I have no qualms with I that. was gonna bring it this week, I just forgot. Nice. Like last week I saw somebody bomb and I was like, God, I need that fucking because on the podcast, when there's multiple people and somebody's like run like whittles, he was running bits on me and I could feel it i've never seen him do comedy but i could feel it in my heart that he was running bits on me and i was like no nope, not gonna laugh and tony didn't laugh it would be like fear <laughs> <laughs> but it just makes you feel like an asshole for trying to tell a stupid joke but yeah that makes it funny to everybody else yeah my uh my boss does that to me all the time because i'll kind of run you know that's i feel like that's the best part of working in a kitchen is like that's where you go to run your material I've on crushed people. crushed works. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, okay, this is my new joke. I'm going to use it on my coworkers, see how they like it. They're disgusting people, so they'll probably enjoy it too, you know, and then you can take it to the stage. But my boss can tell that I'm running jokes, and mm-hmm. he'll just, you know, uh, 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 you should be a comedian. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. You got to fit it in organically. Yeah. Only drop them when they come up. Like if that subject comes up, yeah. then drop your punchline or whatever. But yeah. if you try to tell a whole joke, it's too obvious, and it makes people like, what are you doing right now? Yeah, that's why I don't get when people are like, oh, you're a comedian. Like, tell me one of your jokes. Like, no, it's awkward when you ask me to, like, just sit here and tell a joke from one of my stand-up bits like i have to work into it i can't just it's not like a knock-knock joke you know i always do i felt the same about my hair or my quarantine hair as i do about my dick feels great to play with hate myself when i see it in the mirror there you go that's my standard like tell me a joke yeah um and i've had a lot of people be like you didn't write that I'm like motherfucker yeah i, I just five don't. five full notebooks yeah I don't entertain them anymore because, you know, like it if depends you, if, on the mood. Yeah. If you want to see if you if you want to hear my jokes, come to a show. If you want to see my jokes, I post shit on Facebook all the time that I think is comedian comedic. Like it just, you know, hmm. make an effort. Pay right. attention. You don't get this for free, you know, and if you are going to get it for free, it's going to be in like a comedy you're setting. Gonna where you're going to be tipping Carlos. All right. Yeah. You're going to be tipping Carlos. You're going to be watching my friends tell jokes, too, because they are also funny and deserve acknowledgement, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, that's Jesse wasn't very funny last night. He was having a night. I know. I addressed it. Yeah. Then I went and hugged him. Yeah. <laughs> Just so he does. Like, I'm. I'm always worried about a few people, like the newer people. It's like, hey, just say so you no. Know, if I talk shit about you on stage, it's because I love you. Like, and if I'm kind of mean about it, that means I love you more. Like, I love you enough to feel like yeah. you'll get that this is a joke. Like, yeah. And he's always like, cool, man. Like, but the first time I feel like he was a little like, what the fuck? Yeah. Or no, he apologized. I was like, never apologize, dude. I was just talking shit. Like I noticed something during your set and I thought it'd be funny to say. Yeah. That's all. Like I figured you could take it. Yeah. No, it's cool. He's, he's a good guy. It's been nice having like a friend around during all of this. Yeah. Jadrian's the worst. Huh? Jadrian's the worst. I love Jadrian. Me too. He's my favorite. He's just, he's gone a lot. You know, mm-hmm. he's got his daughter and shit. Like, I thought that by him moving into my house that I would get to see him more, but I really see less of him somehow. Huh. It's, I, recently he's been around more, you know, and that's, you know, just on whatever. But he, he really spends most of his time with his daughter, which is very wholesome Admirable. and sweet. Yeah, he's a good dad. That's just awesome. because his jokes paint him as not as much of a good dad as you would think. He really is. His jokes don't paint him so much as a terrible dad. They just make him look dumb. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Uh, my jokes make me look like I got a little dick and all kinds of other things. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. Did yep. the people laugh? That's all that matters. Yeah. Yep. That's all I got. I just want to make people laugh. That's the goal. One day I'm going to figure out how to make money talking shit all i want in this whole world (laughs) that's fair yeah i would like to make money just not physically exerting myself that's my big thing i'm like how can i move the least amount but still make money from it you know Mm. i like moving makes me feel alive Mm. went to the gym this morning yeah this you and i are very different that way i like climbed a couple of sets of stairs to get to like my um landlord's office and I was winded by the end of it. And I was mm. like, fuck, that was my cardio for the day, I guess. I just stepped my cardio up to 45 minutes, son. Ugh. 
but it makes me feel so alive and my mental health goes down very quickly yeah like if i'm not working out that's fair i'm just a dick like i don't have patience and but once i've done something hard that day everything else i'm just like okay it's not that big of a deal it's not riding a bike for 45 minutes that shit sucks yeah (laughs) that's fair lifting heavy weights whatever and i i like to look good yeah my girlfriend's hot i feel like i should try to be yeah there you go good looking couples like make the best babies i don't know i don't know what that was sorry i agree (laughs) interracial couples historically make the cutest babies oh that's fair half black half white half black half chinese have you ever seen a half black half chinese baby yeah beautiful yeah i forget what comic oh tom segura he's like i'll i'll trade like i'll kill like nine white babies to have an asian baby (laughs) (laughs) which is awesome yeah and true white babies are kind of ugly i looked like the michelin man off ghostbusters nice yeah my mom yeah. said that i looked like an alien and that was terrifying all babies her. do she was like oh, you were an ugly baby she would tell me this as a child and i like it's no surprise to me that growing up i had a lot of self-confidence issues mm. you know and still do to this day when i'm like wait i'm a hot woman like i forget that sometimes you mm. know and I then some you. days i'm just not that you know because that that is that is the thing like it's a flip-flop we're not always so put together but the more com- or the more i exercise the more put together i am I, i'm less i'm more predictable like i can i have an idea of what kind of mood i'm gonna be in that's fair even though that's, i worked out yesterday and i was still sad panda when i got there but. that's kind of how i feel about like i don't know just keeping my space clean like once sure. i have my room like clean and the bed's made and the dishes are done like then i know what i'm gonna do with my day and i'm in instantly better of a mood when all of that shit is done which is so funny because when i was a kid i was such a fucking slob like most of my life i was a slob and then living with other people forced me to be cleaner that'll do it roommates made me be the person who does dishes all the time and keeps things clean because mostly because people yelled at me about it too much that all happened. And now I'm scared of being yelled at anytime there's like a sock on the floor. Yeah. Yep. I do dishes because my girlfriend cooks a lot mm-hmm. and I just feel like she shouldn't have to do both. She has in the past when I'm really busy or whatever, but I think she knows like I have time to do it. Like yeah. if I just put my mind to it. So she'll just like let them stack up. And when I see like a full sink, it drives me fucking crazy. Like yeah. it, I can't think. Yeah. I can't like it ruins my whole fucking oh, yeah, <laughs> flow. For sure. Uh I can't I, write jokes. Just like there's a sink full of dishes right now. Yep. I have like these big pots and bowls that I use for my cooking and so they'll go into the sink and then one plate goes on top and it looks like a full sink and I will start to lose my shit and be like, Oh my god and then I'm like, Oh, this looks worse than it is. It's like one plate and two bowls, but here we are now, so clean. But, yeah. I, Good. I do I, I do my own dishes all the time and I am a cook. It's fine. I'm not your boy. I have zero interest in being a cook and doing the dishes. Yeah. I well I'm like I end up doing most of my own dishes just because like I want to cook again, you know? Mm. So like during game nights it's like I'll be people will be asking like, Hey, can I help out? Can I do something? But I'm like washing all of the dishes as I go because I want to keep I do it cooking. as I go. Kelly just puts shit in the sink. And, oh. And then she has a pile of shit. Yeah. You know? I can't do it that way or I won't won't clean it. My biggest thing that drives me crazy is when people put shit in the sink but they don't rinse it. Don't even get me started. And you're like, bro, like it would have taken you an extra point f- five seconds to just turn on the faucet for like a second turn it back off and then now there's not crusty shit all in the inside of your cereal bowl because you decided to eat oatmeal and not rinse it out because you're an asshole you yeah. know turns the easiest job in the world to kind of a pain in the ass yeah yeah you're sitting there for like 20 minutes just scrubbing that one piece of oatmeal that won't come off yeah last night i was doing dishes when kelly got home and i was in a bad mood i, I was a little short with her trying not to be yeah and i was apologizing already for being a dick and then uh I got to like the bottom of the sink and there was one bowl that was just like caked. And I know it's not me. I I don't always wash my dishes right away, but I never don't rinse them. Like not never. And I saw that and I was just like, what the fuck is this? And then I kind of looked over at her. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm an asshole. And then I just washed it anyway. (laughs) But I was was, like bewildered 
every other dish in the sink is like pretty much clean. You yeah. know, you just got to sanitize it. And then this one just piece of shit, filthy, <laughs> crusty, like taco meat Ew. or something, you know. That is the worst. I hate that so much. I hate it when people use like dishes that aren't normally meant for a certain thing. Like, for example, somebody used one of my mugs to put mac and cheese into and it was like my rounded like pokemon mug it's not easy to get into yeah Yeah, and they used it for mac and cheese and then they also didn't rinse it and so i just had like you know and this was homemade mac and cheese like so it was like cheese sauce and breadcrumbs and like green chili and bacon just crusted into this fucking thing and i'm so so happy camper there's like roommate rules where you don't use like the special shit yeah like if you're gonna use a mug, use the shitty mug, the standard mug, yeah. like the one that looks easy to clean. And well, in my house, we're not allowed to use anything of Taylor's. So, cause she she lost it on me for um, leaving a pot in the sink for two days, and she was like, I don't want you using my kitchen shit. So I reorganized the entire kitchen and you know put all of her stuff in a drawer for her, and then all of my stuff lives in the cabinets, because I actually have more, but, so, you know, huh. the, the the rule for the roommates is, um, if you're friends with Emma, you can use all the spooky goth cups, and uh, just don't touch any of Taylor's shit, so. That's fair. Yeah. I guess. It's so weird. It feels like I, <laughs> having my cabinets organized by person, instead of, like, by what the stuff is, you know, because I'm used to living in normal, functional households Mm -hmm. so it's like you know on one side of the cabinet is like a stack of plates and bowls and cups that are all mine and then on the other side is a stack that's like plates and cups and bowls that are all hers it's just like dude what seems less efficient yeah it's way less efficient that is one of the good things about being in a relationship like we share everything like pretty much she doesn't really fuck with this stuff but she has no need to yeah if she really wanted to i'd show her how to use it whatever yeah but everything could, else is ours. Yeah. I guess that's one thing I miss about being in a relationship is like, you know. And even then, if I used one of her like now jeans, I would make a point to clean it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I would treat it better than mine. Like just. Just basic. Because if she thing. needs a fucking water bottle, uh, she knows she owns a water bottle. You know. Yeah. Things like that. Like, yeah. Try to be courteous. Yeah. It's just basic human decency. It's kind also of stuff. good for the sex. Hmm. Fair enough. Frequency of. The more you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess that makes sense if you're a guy and you're doing the chores, and you know you're doing them regularly. Then I probably would be hornier too. Like, well, now I don't have to do the dishes, so cool. And it's not every time, but like if I have time, I just do it because it makes it doesn't seem to bother her. Bothers the shit out of me, like. So, whatever. It's my problem. Yeah. I don't know. What else you got? You got anything to talk about? I don't know. Do I have anything to talk about? I feel like I always have something to talk about, but, you know. Sexual harassment in the workplace. Jay? Oh, yeah. Jay Adrian's the problem. No, I have a coworker who, well, he's gotten better, but it was like a couple of months there of just like nightmarish. Like, this dude was like, oh. I'm super into you. Would you want to go out? And I'm like, no, I don't date coworkers. And then a couple days later, he comes in. He's like, oh, I'm glad you're still here. I'm like closing the kitchen. He's like, I uh, I wanted to go to the hot springs, and I was hoping you'd want to come with. Like, I, I really think we have good conversations, and we should, like, go out sometime. And I was like, no. Sounds like you don't have any attraction to this guy. Absolutely not. But, you know, and then I'm like, well, no, I still – stand by what i said the other day i don't date co-workers plus you know there's here are some other reasons that i don't think that we're compatible what if you're super into him would you date your co-worker yeah good to know yeah hear that you fucking nerd <laughs> <laughs> i should well, maybe not at the place that i'm at like when i was small at, it's really small steamworks when i worked at different. steamworks yeah i, I would have like dated a co-worker well, like a but... quarter of the town works there if you don't fuck anybody that works there who are you gonna fuck for real actually it's funny because when i worked at steamworks i never did bone anybody who worked there and then a couple months after i quit i finally got to bone one of the steamworks guys so that felt good i was like yeah server server yeah nice uh 
that super tall dude. Sure. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. Uh, there's a few of them, but uh, good for you. Yeah, it was nice. He, uh, he, we went on a couple dates, and it was like decent enough, but I, I, there was not a whole lot of chemistry, and the conversations were kind of boring. Sex was decent, but hey. I was like, yeah, you're you're big into like hiking and shit, and that's like what you like to do with your free time, and that's Welcome not to Durango. Yeah, that's not what I like to do. That's why I gave up on dating in Durango. Honestly, I was just like, I'm not gonna meet another person who is like, nah, the outdoors aren't for me. I don't really fuck with hiking. Yeah, you don't. It feels like a waste of time. Yeah, to me. My thing is. Like, I am okay with the idea of going out into the woods and just, like, wandering around and, like, having a picnic or something. But, like, when you have to make it into this, like, goal, this destination, like, we have to conquer this mountain and we have to get to the top by this point or else it's a waste of time. I'm like, no. Like, but if you want to go wander around in the woods and look at cool mushrooms and fucking find on flowers. Mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, on mushrooms. Like, you know, pretend that we're in Lord of the Rings. Like, count me in. But... Like, I really just, you know, I want to, like, get in touch with my inner child when I go into nature and, like, you know, live out that fantasy of, like, being a woodland nymph, not, you know. I don't think drugs are usually involved. I have a good imagination, but, yeah, drugs would be nice. It makes me whimsical in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so that. God, now I want to take mushrooms and go out into the woods, just not in this weather. Cause, mm. well, that's a tidbit nipply right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you're, like, Let's go check out the ice lakes. It's like a couple miles or whatever. Like I can get in on that. Like, but yeah, I I don't have a day to wake up at five a.m. drive somewhere to climb a fucking mountain just to walk down the goddamn mountain. Yeah, like that is not for me. No. Nope. Um, I wouldn't even snowboard if there weren't cherry lifts. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like, God, some of my thing too is is like, okay, if you're going just for the cool view. 90% of the world has already taken pictures of it, so I can just sit there in the comfort of my own home, like, watching somebody else's Instagram story of the hike, and it's like I did the hike myself without getting cold You could probably type in hashtag whatever this destination is yeah. and find hundreds of pictures. Yeah. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, well, I don't really need to go there to see the view. I pictures mean, are never the same, though. you got to admit that. Like, that's, a, yeah. Picture will never do, what, a hit of acid and being there in person like and you're gonna you're gonna camp say you already got camp set up there's a fire going and you're looking at this view with no more responsibilities for the night on acid like i bet you can have some profound special like yeah thoughts and feelings in that moment that you earned but yeah it's i'll go camping i guess if yeah. i got time i like camping yeah i've always liked camping but yeah i just Making a goal to spend my day off doing something physical all day that has little to no, like, payoff just doesn't seem worth it to me, you know? Everybody's different. Yeah. Huh. I mean, for me, you know, and, and, like, it's like, okay, when I go home from this, I'm going to sit on my ass and play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 until I complete every single fucking one of those parks. Yeah, and I beat that last year. So. Yeah. Uh, like, that's not going to matter to anybody else. I've beaten them before. Huh. This is just, you know, I just got the remaster for my Switch. Yeah, it was I did on it sale. last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right when it came out. I yeah. was like, ah, I need this in my life. And yep. then I kind of took over some time. For yeah. Sure. I uh, I went to GameStop the other day because I was looking for Christmas presents for my nephew. He's who I got for my family is like Secret Santa, and I was like, okay, cool. Like he likes video games. He's a nine year old boy. Like I will find something for him at GameStop. For sure. I walked out with Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two, and that was it. And that was not for him. It was for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes a Christmas present to get you into store to buy yourself something. Yeah. I, I was like, you know, honestly, it's been a rough couple of weeks. Like, I deserve something. It was on sale, like, 40 bucks for a new game. Not bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, fuck it. I also got new work pants that day, and it was okay. Did you get your nephew anything? I didn't. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Yeah. I, I wanted to, like, check in with my sister, too, and just, like, make sure that he's still into the same things that I think he's into, because I don't see the kids very often you know and i did get my oldest nephew who i know the most because i was still living in new mexico he's like eight or nine now so the last time i got one of my nephews i got him enough nerf guns 
for all the kids. It was like one badass one and two smaller ones so siblings could play. And then I got him like 500 Nerf darts. <laughs> nice. That's actually a He good... was pumped. <laughs> my sister might hate me forever if yeah, I do my, that. Yeah, my dad, my brother were just like, what the fuck, dude? They're everywhere. <laughs> it would be like flashbacks of living at Trevin's house again. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you ever heard about the nor- Nerf Wars over yeah. there, but it was a nightmare. He was the one that shoots balls, right? He had, well, he had like a collection. He did have the one that shoots balls. And um, I mean, he had like literal, like automatic fucking like machine gun type Nerf guns. And I'd wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and c- try to come out of my room to make coffee and then just hear. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. You know, I'm getting nerfed at eight o'clock in the morning. Kind of fun. Kind it of was annoying. fun. Kind of fun. Kind of annoying. Yeah, me and Trevin would fight. Sometimes I'd be cooking and they would have like, you know, they would start shooting the guns. And I'm like, dude, you just got a Nerf dart into the steak. Like, do you want melted styrofoam in your prime rib? Because this is what's happening right now. Like, fuck off. I am cooking. If I had Nerf guns handy, Nerf guns handy, I would definitely do that to my girlfriend. Yeah. I just slap her ass all the time. Yeah. Like if she's cooking, I'd try to sneak up on her and slap her ass or tickle her. I would be disappointed. If she doesn't have a knife in her hand. That's fair. That's, that's rule one. really smart. <laughs> I, yeah, that's that's very smart. I don't like it when people approach me when I have a knife in my hand for obvious reasons. My my roommate did that. The last time we got into a fight, she came out and she started shit with me while I was chopping potatoes. And I had a knife in my hand. She was like approaching me. And I was like, what the fuck? It's not normal people behavior, right? Like, it's... Shows a little regard for one's safety. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't... I don't think I would actually... St- Depends on your level of fear, anger. Yeah. Depends on the... You know. Yeah. What adrenaline's flowing through your body at the moment. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I would ever stab anybody either, but I thought about it at Steamworks. Yeah. Somebody talking shit while you're chopping something. I'm like, mm-hmm. bitch, I don't even know you. <laughs> right? I would have that, especially with that one little kid, fucking Devin. Mm-hmm. And he'd like come in. There was one time where I was on saute and he started yelling at me. He was like, no, 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 no. You have to put the vegetables in the pan before the oil. And I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, young kids are stupid. Yeah. They, they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And they haven't learned enough times to realize if you're not. 100 percent positive on something just keep your mouth shut yeah might learn something yeah but as a as an older person i've definitely uh adopted that line of thinking yeah more so and also like you know it's okay to admit that you didn't know a thing you know the best yeah how else are you gonna learn yeah i admit all the time when i make mistakes or yeah. don't know shit ah part of being human agreed well you got anything else you want to tell these people um well you're being featured at oh, yeah. the starlight this month are you excited uh yeah i'm a little nervous about the date being two days after christmas yeah That's, it's uh a risky biscuits but whatever <sighs> yeah if there's uh, nobody there i want to do it again just so you know <laughs> i mean that's valid yeah we can do that i you know i'm happy that you're willing to do this at all i had people lined up and then they kind of bailed on, on me last second yeah because they probably looked at the calendar <laughs> like well that's a terrible day to do comedy. no it was actually it was so it was gonna be autumn horvat and matt Zemek. Yeah. yeah um but they ended up having scheduling issues because she was they were gonna come down to durango um to visit her family or something for the mm-hmm. holidays and um they ended up having to work through the holidays after all so that's a decent reason, I guess. Yeah, I I wasn't mad about it. I was and like, they gave oh. you some notice. Yeah, like being an adult, you know, we we sometimes have to work when we don't want to. Fuck all that. Yeah, I'm oh, done with that shit. I, I, there's a part of me that's like, should I start like my own restaurant or something so I don't have to fucking. Have you tried like, OnlyFans? I don't want to start an OnlyFans. Oh, I was just curious. I like I've thought about it. Seems like a revenue source that would be more profitable for you than me yeah i trust me it's one of those things i've thought about a lot especially since i lost so much weight this year and i like i look good i Mm. look real good um and like nobody else is getting to see me naked so i feel like somebody should get to you know what about Um, the mailman in denver oh he disappeared he's uh he stopped talking to me just out of nowhere i think he got a girlfriend 100 percent. yeah um and then well actually no he hit me up out of the blue super randomly the other night and i was like what the fuck we haven't talked in six months so Anyway. 
Shout out to that mailman. Yeah. Um, I, 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 want, I want some money, honey. I'll send pictures of my ass if you send me some money. Here's the thing about an OnlyFans. I mean, I'm sure you have to approve people. Yeah, my big thing, the reason I've thought about, or the reason I don't want to do it is, like, every time I talk about starting an OnlyFans, like, the look in all of the male comics, their eyes, and they're like, huh? And I'm like, no, Jason, you're not going to get to see my ass. Fuck you. Trevin, like I said, you probably get to approve these people. Yeah. Or, like, you know, I have a little brother. That's <laughs> That's been my biggest reason for, like, not wanting to post my nudes on the internet. Is if I your don't... little brother uh, pays to see you naked, that's on him, not you. That's fair. And you should stop talking to him at that point. Yeah. That's... <laughs> yeah. I've never paid to see anybody's OnlyFans, but I know Jonas has. Hmm. I... I used to pay for one girl's OnlyFans. Oh, yeah? Um, Did yeah. you know her in the past? Not really. We were in the same, like, group of people when I lived in Albuquerque. We had the same, like, crew, but we never actually, like, met one-on-one. And then she added me on Facebook, like, a couple months after I left Albuquerque. And we have been just kind of in love with each other via the internet for years. And so when she started her OnlyFans, I was like, uh, <laughs> yes, please. Mm. and uh, i was not dissatisfied yeah i Lots think it's black leather and fishnets and latex and things tight yeah uh, i think we asked jacob jonas um if he could go back in time and tell his younger self something like what would it be and he was like yes this girl might be a bitch now but in 10 years you can pay 9.99 and see hundreds of pictures of her naked <laughs> This is one of the funnier things I've heard. Sounds pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Wish I was more entertaining at the moment. Oh, well. I feel the same way. Um. So where do they find you, Emma? Instagram, Emma Z Comedy. TikTok, Emma Z Comedy. I'm Emma Z Comedy everywhere. Yeah, those links are in the description below. Um, You know where to find us. And Brian Nystrom at the Starlight Lounge, December 27th. Drew Mitchell will be opening for you, by the way. I don't really? Know if I told you that. I yeah. thought he was dead. No, he's not dead. He's doing 15 to open for you. He signed on. He's willing. I need to get posters together. Uh, he hasn't sent me a headshot, but nice. I was like, we're going to make this a bromantic comedy show. I told everybody last night he was my gimp. Hmm. You remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah. So it's going to be even better to have him featuring for you. Yeah, he doesn't even know these jokes. <laughs> that was the first time I told that joke, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Ethan as far as and the Chava people for the music. And shout out to Dead Room Comedy, our one and only sponsors. We may have more soon. We may not. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be sponsored by a giant weed company soon. So, Ooh, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm yeah. very excited. I will talk more about everything when it comes to fruition. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Emma Z. Thank you. Peace. The dough to get the dough, speaking to the masses. Hit the road to do a show, microphone madness. Trip easy, easy, cheap sunglasses. Straight passion, my third eye active. Watching backpacks through the show, beeping that shit. Vocally, hearing me, locally, lyrically. Know what I'm supposed to be, and I don't got no fear of it. I'm coming for your brain, homie, coming at you spiritually. Stepped into the game, and I knew that flow was slippery, but check my flow, though. No. Turn the whack news to history. Let them do their thing instead, I put them out their misery. And simply put, just got this connected like my boy big money man this can't be neglected grab a mic and check it coming up in your direction gift that i've been blessed with this hustle is respected and practice poetic mind on the set list. got the groove to match everybody step with still haven't fulfilled a whole vision yet <laughs> life right now still so picturesque i'm rocking every stage until i get a bigger check even though our hit are you ready for a bigger step for the truth next somebody coming at your neck i could have died today that's why i'm smoking cigarettes and got precision Set of skills and imagination, creation, and innovating with motivation. I'm chasing my goals, the giants that I'll be racing. I'ma stride through the finish like a 6 5 Jamaican. Be in my chest, like, yeah, what my name is. Ink on my chest, what my homie spray paint in. Summer days, so escape. PlayStation, he looking down on me and I can't stay patient. I ain't just trying to say shit. Sit back and face this real time. I've been smoking instrumental playlist. Chill in the cut. Now these small places, I ain't getting love now, man. Fuck being famous, yeah, they tell me. 
really hard to make it. They don't understand I love being underestimated. Second guess it and I'll take it that you're undereducated. Anyway, this got me thinking about them old records playing. Why? It's filled with soul and it fills my mind. Tell feather shaking while the rhythm takes flight. What I'm doing wrong, I ain't gonna fake right. I don't get no sleep because the music takes night. Nocturnal life with my basement lights. Just roll some nice, keep my drink on ice. If you don't get it once and you don't hear it twice, moving on this leave right here is out of sight. I'ma stay away. Stay away. Bye.